Pensimal's eyes glistened with anger. You are not fit for this duty, Hugh William. The princess of the realm will not be protected by a blubbering halfwit who can't even read a map. You dare to insult the royal dragon owl? You forget yourself. Hugh William lifted a hand. Enough of this. The queen's eyes narrowed. Is that so? I'm not the halfwit you think me, and I will not tolerate any insult to my cousin, who is my dearest friend. She'll never be your friend if you don't start behaving like one. Do you have any idea how much power the girl has? I do. She turned her back on him and began to gather her things. And if you are wise, Majesty, you'll stop threatening her and try to learn from her wisdom. She's a child, and you are a child, and you will never be anything more than a child. Huelima paused in the act of folding her shirt. She knew she was only twelve summers old, but she had felt more grown up these past five years since her first meeting with Queen Shayana. Perhaps she was being a little hard on her cousin Panzimal. It was hardly her fault if he could not recognize a rare and valuable gem in the rough. Thank you, cousin, she said softly. I know you mean well. His shoulders slumped in defeat. He, Williama, I am only trying to. To protect me, to guard my honor, I understand. She folded her jacket over the top of the pile. Please tell the king I will be in the courtyard within the hour. No, I can't. He will miss me. He'll never know I'm gone. I'll return to the palace before dinner and see to his needs myself. In fact, I shall make sure he eats very well. It is my pleasure to serve him. Goodbye. She swept past him and strode for the door. The queen called after her. Heed your cousin's advice, young Huilima. A dragon does not fly into battle with a weak wing. You are mistaken, Majesty. Hugh Iliama slipped out of the room and fled to her private chamber, where she barricaded herself inside and paced the floor in furious fury until a knock on the door disturbed her thoughts. Yes, what is it? I hope you don't mind me visiting. Laya opened the door to find Sheatha standing there, dressed in an unobtrusive suit of dark blue wool. I hope you don't mind, but we're having a bit of an emergency here at the palace and I need someone I can trust to get a message to the dragon elders in the capital. They've got to come back to Kishkarat and save the city. How can I help? Laya asked. We need your help to get a message to them, and then I can get you to safety, too. Me? Why? You're important to them. Shaitha gave her a hard look, her dark eyes filled with sympathy. It's all right, it's not your fault. Your father, I mean, not your mother. What happened? That's just it. There's nothing much I can say about it. But you need to go to the Dragon Elders as quickly as you can and warn them that there's a traitor in the palace. The city is already under attack. I'll know what to do when they hear that. Leia closed the door in Shaitha's face. Then she hurried to her writing desk, where she penned a short missive to her mother, apologizing for her absence. If she was not careful, she would soon have to take up the practice of sending letters in code. She stuffed it inside a tiny silver box, along with one of the emeralds from her jewelry box. As she stepped out of her chamber, she heard raised voices coming from the queen's apartments. Panzimal, most likely. She swallowed down a pang of guilt as she ran lighted down the stairs and out into the courtyard, where the king's guardsmen had already begun setting out the lines of soldiers to prepare for the final battle. She slipped behind a low wall and readied herself to flee into the night, only to freeze in horror as a figure emerged from behind a column of soldiers. It was General Jella Pularap, one of the finest warriors on all of Franer Island. He bowed, with an elegant gesture that did not touch the ground with his forehead. Your Highness. We thought you would not wish to miss the opportunity to watch us leave. No, she said, blinking at him through her tears. No, I wouldn't want that. I'm sorry, I ran off earlier. The general nodded once more, and his expression softened into something akin to compassion. Your mother says you have no fear, your highness. No fear? Laia choked on her sobs as she stared up into his eyes. I have more fear than anyone. It's the fear that makes me strong. If I didn't have fear, I'd be dead, or worse, in the belly of some beast. General Jalaplarap took a step backwards, shaking his head in dismay. Forgive me, your highness. I had no idea you were so, so young. Oh, said Hugh Eliema, stunned by the compliment. I'm not that young, but I'm not old enough for war either. I'm sorry, he said again, this time with genuine pain in his voice. I must leave now. We ride out at dawn. He William managed to bow gracefully as he walked away, but could not stop her tears from falling, for her mother would never forgive her for running away again.